Um, so first, I want to thank everyone who is joining us uh, today for our last part of our Before You Go series. I think we're ending with a big bang um, with our current students who will uh, provide you all with some great um, feedback on how you can support your students as they um, are preparing for, for finals and just coming home and preparing for such a stressful time. Um, we'll start off with a few introductions. Um, so my name is Tawana Brown and I serve as the Assistant Director in Parent and Family Programs. Um, and I'll turn it over to Virginia so she can introduce herself and then we'll go from there. You're muted, Virginia. I just saw that. That's my bad. Hi, I'm Virginia. I'm the Parent Family Programs intern. Um, I'm a current senior graduating in December. And I think that's it. I think that's all the important stuff. Yeah. So What's I'm, your major, Virginia? Oh, I'm a social work major. Thank you. Okay, Carson. Hi, um, my name is Carson and I'm a sophomore. Um, so I won't be graduating for a little while. Um, and I'm a peer coach. So I'm usually in um, Russell with CCSS. Thank you, Carson. And Devon? Hi, my name is Donovan. I'm a junior, <laughs> um, majoring in management information systems and accounting. And I'm also a peer coach. Thank you. Thank you so much. So kind of like I said earlier, we want to, to just share a little information. Um, our goal in parent and family programs is really to support family members, helping them support their students. And so, like I said, that during this time, it can be a little stressful as students are preparing for finals. And I think uh, getting a student's perspective of what this time feels like for your student um, will better equip you to be able to just kind of support them and be there for them for whatever they need. Um, so I guess we'll start off with an easy question um, for you all. What are some resources that you think, since you've been on campus, has helped you prepare better for finals um, that parents may be able to share with their students to say, hey, try this resource. It can be beneficial. Um, one resource I will say is you know, the capstone for student success. You know, I like to tell students it is a one-stop shop for all academic needs, where whether it's tutoring, um, we provide tutoring for accounting, biology, sciences, math, everything, you name it, we have it. And also peer coaching, you know, having needing advice on how to, you know, study, how to manage your time better, how to um, go to class, how to be just, how to excel academically in your career. So that is one resource I will, you know, recommend to all my students is just try it out, see the services they have and, you know, make the best of it. Um, I would also just to add on to what Donovan said, also at the um, Capstone Center for Student Success, we run a lot of like study and skill sessions towards the end of the year. So I think that, you know, we have students that come in that are really struggling in math. So we are able to, we have the resources to create like different um, worksheets and other resources that students can use. Um, and so like, I know um, later on this year, like during dead week, we'll have like, you know, different like anxiety, like test anxiety um, strategies and things like that and how to overcome those fears that a lot of students have, especially in this climate where you know, I've never even taken a final in person and I'm almost a junior. So like just remembering that, you know, this is like not an easy time and not, we don't know how to navigate it. So having those resources, I think is really important. Yeah, so I'm going to piggyback off of both Carson and Donovan. So I'm actually a transfer student. I transferred to Alabama uh, in May of 2020. So right after COVID hit. So everything was like virtual. But the college that I did go to before this, I utilized like the same as what with like the Capstone Center for Student Success. Um, I cannot write papers. So I utilize the writing. I know I think Capstone pretty sure has like writing resources that really helped me at the college that I was at. And I have no doubt that it is, is like amazing here. So I basically the same. 
That is awesome. I think all of those are great resources. Um, and it can also take a load off your student um, as well. Another thing I would add is maybe doing study groups, right? When I, I remember many moons ago when I was in undergrad and grad school, um, finding a group of my classmates or peers that I could just say, hey, let's get together and study. Uh, and it, it made it a little bit more fun, all right? It's not as serious all the time. You would be able to laugh a little bit. And then it really helped um, me kind of associate some of the fun that we had with some of the learning that I did. And so I also think that's another great resource to use as well. Uh, so another question, we know that during this time, emotions can be high. Right. Sometimes students have not done well, especially freshmen. Right. They are kind of transitioning. Football has been in full swing. Um, maybe they missed a few classes, but not too many. So maybe they have not done well on some tests and things like that. I know y'all haven't had that problem, but what from your friends, what can you what resources or what advice would you give a parent who has a student that is struggling during this time? Um, and that it's really impacting emotionally um, how they are kind of presenting. They may be depressed or things like that. So how can a parent help a student who is struggling with finals or during this time of the year? Um, I would, I guess I'll start us off with this one. Um, I personally, just from what I've seen, like through um, being a peer coach and whatnot, I think a lot of what the struggle stems off of is um, wanting to make their family proud and wanting to make, you know, kind of keep, you know, they just left for college and they want to come back and be able to say that, you know, I did well there. And so I think a lot of it just comes from the support and like having that, like, you know, the parents or guardians, like that push and that support, but also being like, you know, if you don't get a 4.0 your first semester of college, like I'm not going to kick you out. You know what I mean? Just being able to, kind of see both sides and being willing to be proud knowing that they did their best because I think that sometimes when you talk with like your parents or your guardians or anything like that about your grades they just think oh well, you know that's not an A even though like it could be like a really hard class you know but they just don't see that because they're not here so I think just supporting them regardless of their GPA. I will say, I know for myself and a lot of other students, I'm sure a lot of the emotional stress can come from a lack of sleep. Like for, especially for freshmen, this is their first time off campus. They don't have their parents telling them what to do all the time. Their sleeping schedules are probably messed up. I know one semester I ended the day at 11 o'clock and then I started the other days at 11. So that really messed with my sleep. So you know, checking in, you know, like, have you gotten enough sleep? I know that can really affect like the emotional, like capabilities of students. And then that also impacts their ability to study. And like, you can't retain as much information when you are extremely sleep deprived. And so that can affect grades as well. So just checking in, making sure they're getting sleep. I know that like, it seems a little like kind of like, that's not what you would expect, but sleep can definitely like affect grades and studying and cramming and the all the infamous all-nighters that you should never do <laughs> it's not a flex I promise <laughs> um yeah piggybacking off of Carson and Virginia you know having that support system is what college students need and you know having their parents backing on you know you might not do your best but at least you tried. You can say that you tried and you put your best to it. So reassure, reassuring them, saying, hey, I'm not upset. You know, this is what happened. Let's see how we can grow from this, how we can, you know, do better next time. As well as, you know, lack of sleep. Also, you know, friends, other things, life in general can impact studying, going to class and everything else. So, you know, checking in on them and saying, hey, how things are going, what new is happening, or has this been going on? Just let them know that they have someone to talk to, because I know sometimes when I'm talking to students, they really don't have anyone to talk to about their problems or anything like that. So they keep them bottled in and it reflects on their grades. So just let them know that, you know, 
you're a shoulder they can lean on and they can talk to you about their problems. Yes, I like all of those answers. Um, when I worked in my previous position here at the university um, and I worked a lot with students, uh, that one of the things that they would say is they are stressed about their parents' reaction, right? They don't want to bring home a bad grade and upset their parents. They're afraid that they're going to make them leave college um, because they had a bad semester. And so my advice on this topic would be as extend as much grace as possible. Hold your student accountable, yes. But during their first or maybe first bad semester or first semester as of their freshman year, hold them accountable, but also extend that grace to say, okay, something mu must have happened. How are you going to utilize the resources that are available? How are you going to improve your grades? Um, what support can I offer you? Instead of immediately saying, that's it, you're coming home because you made three Fs this semester. Um, if you're fortunate enough to be able to financially support that student for another try, be, do that, um, like I said, afford them that grace to be able to um, right their wrongs with their grades. Um, so I think the next question I have is, we talked a little bit about like study groups and things like that, but what test taking strategies do you think that family members can pass on to their students um, that will help them be successful? So we talked a little bit also about the Capstone Center for Student Success, but if you yourself had to pass on one one or two strategies that you utilize the most, um, what would that be? Um, I take this one. Um, I would say time. Time is something that's important and, you know, college students struggle. They don't know the concept of time. So starting now and knowing, okay, this is the time frame I have from now until my test to study and manage my study time between that. So, you know, what I tell students start now, because if you wait a week later, that's a week of study time that's gone and you can't get back. And then at the last minute you're cramming to study. So start now and utilize your um, office hours, go to professors, go to TAs and, you know, get their insight on the information and, learn a new perspective about the um, material that you're getting. So starting now and go into office hours and go into TAs and seeing, you know, what other information I can gather to help me study for my test. Kind of going off of what Donovan said, um, we really stress like, like Donovan said about like time is essence and you can't, of the essence and you can't get that back. Um, something else that I've been really trying to do myself and also trying to help with with my coaches with is just turning off the distractions. I know it's so hard to, you know, get away from your phone, especially when a lot of our work right now is online on a computer of a screen of some sort. So it's so easy just to like add a tab and like go to YouTube or to Twitter or whatever. But I really think just like getting away from the screens and from your phone specifically in social media um, it really helps to kind of keep you on track and keep you studying and then also um, having a plan um, you know when you're going to study like so kind of piggybacking off of what Donovan said again like knowing that you you have x amount of time to study and then taking time out of your week like personally I every Sunday night I sit down with my planner and I'm like okay I'm going to study this day, this day, this day, this time for this subject. And it really helps just add a lot of structure versus just saying, I'm going to study on Thursday and then it's six o'clock on Thursday and you haven't studied yet. So just having it written down and having a plan in place really has helped me personally. I would say one of the biggest things that helped me was taking breaks. And I don't mean like taking like a two hour break, but in every study group I've ever been in, we would study for an X uh, amount of time as agreed upon. We take an X break, get snacks by the bathroom, like use those breaks that are social media time. 
and then like get back into studying, have our phones like in our backpacks turned off face down. Or what I started doing when I was taking finals was recording myself studying. And so when I recorded myself studying, I wasn't on my phone and I could see like the progress that I was making. So taking those breaks, but in moderation, not enough to like burn out, but um, enough to where like, I meant, <laughs> I didn't say that correctly. Don't take too many breaks, but take like the breaks that you need is what I was trying to say. We got you, that makes sense. Um, so is there any other tips or anything you all would like to add? Um, let's, let's end with, if there is one word um, that you could give families to help their students, what would it be? Don, we'll start with you, Donna. Um, one word I would say, just encourage just, you know, giving them encouraging words every day, whether that's through a text or a phone call saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking about you. You're going to do great today. I hope your day goes well. You know, you're going to ace this test. Just a pick me up to help them through the day or through their struggle or whatever they're going through. Carson. Donovan, Donovan kind of beat me to it. Um, I would say encouragement and then also just support and like not in support as like how we've talked about it so far but maybe just being like a listening like just being there for them like sometimes like after like I take a test and I don't feel like I did well on it like I just need somebody like to talk to just to explain it even though like they're obviously not gonna understand it because they weren't in the test if that makes sense but like just being like an ear and like being like yes I understand like you know just being there to support them no matter like whether that's they got an A on the test or if they completely failed the test just being there to say you know a one test isn't everything in a lot of cases and just being there to support and like Donna said to encourage them no matter what the circumstances are. Virginia. Okay I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use two words uh gift cards to uh specifically for food um I know when I was taking finals as like a freshman, sophomore, uh, it was very hard to like, you know, cause if you go outside into society and then you get distracted and then you, uh, you know, end up not like spending like two hours outside of your dorm room studying. And so having either a way to like, not have to worry about like making or preparing food, um, or even just ordering it for your student, um, something like healthy so that they're not like really depending on like fast food all the time, but um, just a way to show like, hey, like uh, also that, I think that's another form of support like Donovan and Carson were saying was like thinking about you. I hope that like, cause you know, it's very easy to like not eat when you're studying cause you're so focused on trying to make a good grade. And so having that um, I, has really helped me. Yeah, Virginia, you stole mine. I was going to say money uh, because uh, uh, rewarding your student and I have a five year old. So and I, I reward him when he does well. Uh, and so maybe sometimes if you know that your student has really been studying really hard, kind of like Virginia said, say, here's some money to get coffee. I know you've been studying and doing um, things for school. I just want you to take a minute to have a breather. Um, because oftentimes at the end of the semester, dining dollars are gone, um, money's gone, and so you're left with nothing uh, but family members and guardians and uh, friends who will help you uh, along the way. And so definitely be cognizant of offering that support and all of that. Um, Carson, go ahead. You got a question? Or you want to say something? I just wanted to um, add on to like what you guys are saying. It also kind of reminds like the student that like you're still thinking about them like you know in these tough times you know so I feel like when some students like for me when I'm studying like I like I said like I try to like block everything out so it's just me but then like you know if I get like food delivered to my apartment like, you know it's just like the little things that really make the difference especially during finals week and especially for like the freshmen and like people like sophomores that haven't taken real finals yet so like it just really honestly everyone like it just makes a difference and reminds them like okay even though 
you know, they're not here. Like they still know that I'm trying my best and putting my best forward and then they're rewarding me for that. Yes, I agree. And one more thing that I'm going to add is it removes some of that anxiety, right? Like if you're fearful of what your parents are going to think, um, if you're saying, hey, I see that you've been studying and I know that you've been studying things like that, here is a way that um, I can support you is perfect. It removes some of their anxiety. So, um, well, I thank y'all so much <clears throat> for joining me um, today. I think this is great information for parents and family members. I think it'll be beneficial in helping them support their, their student uh, or students um, if they are not watching live. Um, thank you for tuning in after the fact. Take this um, advice and really apply it because it will be beneficial. You got the informa information from a great source, uh, which is very reliable. Uh, so definitely take that and use it. Um, again, we thank you uh, for joining us and we want to say roll tide and we, we hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you.